Hello and welcome to another one of these ADD videos. Today we're going to be looking at area between two curves concept and uh, we're going to be going over the different scenarios that you might see in area between two curves problem given to you. So uh, the concept basically is you're going to be given either two functions or one function in the x-axis and you're going to need to find the area in between the two functions. It's always going to be the top curve minus the bottom curve. And B and A are going to either be given bounds or the intersection points. So there are three main scenarios. One is a problem can be given to you like this. This is actually pretty straightforward. This is going to be your bottom function because Y, the region, the area of Y values we're looking at, is going to be greater than this one, meaning that it's on the bottom, but it's going to be smaller than the one on the right. So x1 on the left is going to be the bottom function and the right is going to be the top function. Okay. Number one and number two are going to be the bottom bounds here because it's x is greater than that but smaller than x2. So that's the top and bottom. All right. So once you know that you should just be able to go back to that concept top minus bottom and then b and a are you know number one number two. So you just set up the integral and you evaluate. All right, uh, let's look at scenario number two. In scenario number two, you are given a function in the x-axis and bounds. So what you do in that scenario is you, you got to make sure that your function itself doesn't go below the x-axis at any point. So we set it equal to zero and we solve uh, that. The reason why is because the x-axis is the function y equals zero. So what we're doing there is finding if there are any intersection points between these two bounds. Reason being, uh, we can have the region we're looking for be above the x-axis on one side of the intersection point and below the x-axis. If that's the case, you're going to have two integrals uh, because it's below and above on either side. So if it's not on, if the answer is not in between the two test points, then uh, if it's outside the two bounds, then we don't have to worry about that weird scenario. It's just one region, not two regions. Um, and what you do is you pick a number in between the two bounds, and if you get a positive answer, well, that means it's greater than y equals zero, or the x-axis, then the function's on top. But if it, your answer when you plug in your test point is negative, that means uh, the x-axis on, is on top, in that interval and your function that you plugged into is the one that's on the bottom. So x-axis would be on top scenario two and vice versa in scenario one. So that's only if there's one um, I'm sorry that's if the intersection point with the x-axis or when you set it equal to zero is outside the range we're looking for. Um, if it was inside, again, that's going to look something like this. Here's your function. It goes through the x-axis. And we were looking, let's say, between this value and this value. You can clearly see that this region, the, the x-axis is on the bottom and the function is on top, whereas it's vice versa here. So we would need two test points, one between the lower bound that was given and that intersection point in between, and then the other one between the upper bound and that same intersection point. Okay. All right. And then the final scenario is you're just given two function and no bounds. What do we do there? Well, we got to find the intersection points. So we know that at an intersection point, we know that y must equal y. So what you do is you set the two functions equal to each other. It's also what we did in the last scenario, but one of the functions was the x-axis, so it was zero. That's why it was y equals zero. But here we're going to have two distinct functions. So we set them equal to each other and we solve for x. After you solve for x, then you're going to pick a point in between the two intersection points, your test point, and plug it into both functions. If your answer is the larger answer, then that's the function on top and comes first in your integral. And then the smaller answer to that same test point would be on bottom. Okay. Now, once you know which one's on top, which one's on bottom, you got an intersection point, you set up the integral and you integrate. 
Every once in a while when you're doing these, you'll get three points of intersection. That means there's two regions, two test points, and you, you're going to have two intervals. Okay. Uh, basically, you know, you can have a function that looks something like this. So there's your coordinate system. And we're going to have, uh, you know, an oscillating function, something like that and then something that's a straight line. So you can see that, um, let me do a different color than black, hold on. So you can see that there's one, two, three intersection points. So we would need a test point in this region and another different test point in that region. And the top and the bottom would switch so we'd have two distinct integrals the first one would go from this value to the intersection point two and then the second one would go from that one again to this one there right I hope I've cleared up any confusion that you might have as far as the concepts concerned between two curves finding the area um, make sure you check out the example videos and most importantly practice 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 thank you and have a nice day